Adam, good morning to you. Hello. Good morning to you too, Luann. I hate that I need to do this segment. Um, yesterday was the first day for my five-year-old to be institutionalized into public schools. Okay. Usually it's a good thing and very exciting time. We got the pictures and that was good. (laughs) And the drop-off went well. And the pickup was cute. Took a few more pictures. And then he started unpacking his book bag. And um, this content writes itself. So this is the South Carolina Social Studies textbook for kindergartners, five-year-olds. Mm-hmm. Okay. And before seeing this, I thought the narrative, like I know by and large teachers are a little bit more left leaning. Why wouldn't they be? They want to get paid more, right? And there's a union, not necessarily in South Carolina, but unioners are typically a little bit more left leaning. Um, which look like the classic blue dog Democrat, like that was their thing, like stick up for laborers, unions, and teachers need to get paid more. The entire party has just kind of slowly slid into this social justice. We're, we're like defending people who want to be dogs now, and mm. all of a sudden that's that's practical. But I peel open my my son's social studies book, not but four pages into it. There's a section that talks about notable people and biographies that children could plug into online. And naturally, you have your usual suspects, Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, Martin Luther King Jr., as we should have these individuals, Abigail Adams, Sally Ride, the astronaut. Mm fascinating people who who have shaped civilization and our society and were brave or uh, intelligent. Einstein coming up with the the theory of relativity and um, he's too smart for me to even know all the (laughs) theories he came up with. But I'm reading this list and Chaz Bono. Wait. Chaz Bono. What? (laughs) <laughs> is one of the biographies online that my five-year-old child should consider plugging into in his kindergartner social studies book. Good grief. Also on the list, Gavin Newsom. Really? Also on the list, a bunch of names who I didn't recognize, so I went online and looked them up. Almost every single one of them was a civil rights activist, social justice warrior, Mm -hmm. or a labor leader, right? Like Mm -hmm. led a a union. Nowhere to be found on the list is Steve Jobs or Mm -hmm. Henry Ford or Elon Musk, even Barack Obama. You know, this isn't a political thing, right? I recognize that I don't want my kids to go to school and only learn about conservative politicians. That's twisted. That's weird. Yeah. But Chaz Bono, what like, is, do better. What has he, she ever done? <laughs> right? Thank you for properly gendering her. Mm-hmm. And, and for all of our listeners who don't know Chaz Bono is, good reason. Because the person has done nothing in their life other than be born to Sonny Bono and Cher and then wrestle with their gender and then do a gender transition. Only public schools can compile a list that includes Benjamin Franklin, Susan B. Anthony, Chaz Bono, and Gavin Newsom. <laughs> so I get it, right? I get it. So, and, and, and most parents aren't even going to see this or not care. Most parents are trust falling into the public school system. Or they're busy as can be. Or they're just not engaged. They're not going to peel open their kid's textbook like me. I'm a weirdo. I saw my kid's textbooks. I start reading them. I'm like, cool. <laughs> I want to go back to so- social studies. was my favorite class. I learned about, like, the Egyptians and the pilgrims and, you know, some of the early settlers of, of, of different areas of the world and explorers and scientists that revolutionized culture and Well, our kids are learning about Chaz Bono. 
while five-year-olds in China learn math, our kids are being spoon-fed Chaz Bono. I get it. Don't overreact, Adam. It's just a little section in a it's just a little section in the in the textbook. They don't have to go online and look up the biographies. We just put Chaz Bono in there because we wanted to have a little diversity and we thought that that would be an interesting thing for people to to plug into. Don't overreact. You're being you you you're going overboard. You're a radical. Don't put things in textbooks that cause people to overreact. Don't pretend to me that Chaz Bono belongs on a list with Benjamin Franklin. Let's not pretend that when we look at the authors of said book and the contributors, half of them are from South Car- or excuse me, South Carolina. Half of them are from California. Mm-hmm. So our South Carolina education is being dictated by professors in California. I wonder why Gavin Newsom's on the list of notable people. How old is Gavin Newsom? Probably in his 50s. How old will these kids be when it comes time for them to start voting for president? Right? How old will he be at that point? Hey, just, just thoughtfully throw Gavin Newsom in there, the career politician, California's darling politician, who's gotten everything wrong. Everything wrong. His behavior is reprehensible when we're locking down and flatten the curve. He goes and throws a party at French Laundry, the swankiest restaurant in America where no one's wearing masks. He gets caught red-handed and then lies. Is this the person we want five-year-olds to look up to? Don't overreact, Adam. Don't put crap in textbooks that cause people to overreact. Don't stick your nose up at me and pretend that this is normal, thoughtful behavior. That we should be idolizing Gavin Newsom and Chaz Bono. I hate that I even need to do this. And you know, my wife, you know, my wife is a God fearing, flag waving conservative. I love her. I just love conservative women, by the way, you know? Mm hmm. Because it takes some principles to stand up to the crowd, right? It takes some a spine to not fall in line and like, oh, I want to, I want to, I want to behave the way where everyone likes me. I don't want to be the tall poppy. I don't want to uh, uh, get out of line and, and 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 not fit in. You know, her take was Adam. I just don't want to be angry all year. <laughs> Is this what we're gonna get every day? <laughs> You know, because 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 I know you, Adam, you're not going to just take this on the chin and pretend that they didn't try to tell your child Chaz Bono is a notable person. Um, So we got to get the heck out of here. We got to go to, you know, private school, Christian school, Catholic school or something. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, I don't even know if they're any better. Got a couple buddies who sent their kids off to private school and same stuff. Oh, wow. Buddy up in Ohio sent his kid to the best private school, or whatever that means, you know. Mm -hmm. And they saw fit to bring a drag queen in to Mm -mm. read a story to kids. Mm -mm. Like, okay. Okay. And and we're all supposed to pretend that this is normal behavior. I got an idea. I got an idea. Why don't we bring a scientist in? (laughs) Oh, I got another idea. How about a firefighter (laughs) or a police officer? Or a business person, or the guy who works at the manufacturing plant. When I was in high school, they took me to the sewage treatment facility. <laughs> they walked me through where the sewage comes in mm. and how it comes out, and then we all drank a water right from the sewage teeth. One of the most enriching days of my <laughs> life. I don't know about the water, <laughs> but I learned something. Mm-hmm. So. I'm a proud pu- product of public school. I I went to public school. I wanted my kids to go to public school. Because when you go to public school, you like you mix it up with people from all different socioeconomic backgrounds and different life circumstances and and you got to figure out how to deal and negotiate with all these people. That's the beauty of it. 
I live on Daniel Island where it's basically, uh, you know, it looks like a darn movie set. Everything's made of plastic. Like, so I want my kids to go to public school. I want them to bear witness to real life. I want them to recognize that, like, hey, all of this good fortune that you have at your disposal it is not normal. Like, not everyone gets this go. Now, will they retain that? That's my problem, right? I, I need to instill some, you know, grit in my kids that recognizes that even though they were born on third base, like, they did not hit a triple. They are riding daddy's coattails until they make their own way. Um, I'll deal with that. Public school, here's what I need you to do. Teach my kids reading, writing, and arithmetic. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. Notice I didn't say social justice activism. Notice I didn't say gender ideologies. Notable people. Like, throw Bill Clinton on there. Mm -hmm. Throw Barack Obama on there. Throw Bill Gates on there. I don't need to share their worldview but make them notable. Don't just take some celebrity's kid who wrestled with their gender and went through a gender transition and pretend that that person is notable because of that. Now, do I wish Chaz Bono any ill will? Absolutely not. I hope he is living a wonderful life and has found peace in their transition and... Um, you know, that must have been a really difficult go for him to to be born in one body and think they're another person. It must have been a difficult go having Sonny Bono and Cher as your mom and dad. But do we need to teach my five-year-old kid that this person's notable when there was so many people far more notable who've had such a bigger impact on civilization and humanity? After all, this is social studies which is to study the social movements of the world I don't know what the heck I'm going to do you said your daughter's homeschooling right she will the babies are just two years old and younger and she's already like I'm homeschooling yep. these kids mm -hmm. she's yeah. got the same like you know same things thing. from the same hymnals oh yeah uh huh definitely so I think we're just going to all pitch in to help them I mean <clears throat> We didn't, and I know there's some parents right now, like my parents are perfect examples. Like, I send these kids to private school because private school kids are like the rich, wealthy, hoity-toity kids. That's how I think mm -hmm. of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, my parents would be like, what a waste of money. <laughs> You're wasting all that money? There's a perfectly good public school that your kids can ride a bike to. <laughs> they could ride a bike, but they're learning about Chaz Bono in that school. And I know there's a lot of parents, I mean <laughs> – Luann, just give it a couple months. My kid will probably get kicked out of school because <laughs> of his father. And I said that to Claire. I said, I'm, I'm going to go hard on this. Like, I'm not going to pretend that that didn't exist, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. They're going to stick their nose up, up at me and pretend that Chaz Bono is a notable person. And, and here's the crummy part. Michael Bear in my office came up to me because uh, we were talking about, you know, his kids and life. And, mm -hmm. and he goes, he's doing more of our planning than me. I'm running the business and, and, and you know, just – Every week there's a different thing I need to do or hire someone. There's just stuff that, that I deal with now. And Michael is more on the front lines doing a lot of our planning and reviews and things like that. But, but Michael said, uh, Adam, you wouldn't believe the number of teachers and educators that I have spoken to that are tapping out <gasps> and leaving mm -hmm. the workforce oh my. because they're being asked to teach mm -hmm. this drivel. Hmm. They're being asked to educate students using textbooks that were written in California. And I hate it, right? Because naturally, I see this. I can't help but just be like, did my kid's teacher, like, cultivate this textbook? Was it the lady at the front desk? Did all the teachers get together in a little consortium and be like, hey, let's teach our kids about Gavin Newsom and Chaz Bono? 
I mean, also on the list for all of like my like real social studies nerds, is this even social studies? Is, is Chaz Bono a social studies topic? Like Harvey Milk, Cesar Chavez, mm-hmm. like a number. Billy Jean King, <laughs> right? Billy Jean King is 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 someone, and then they'll like, throw in like Daniel Boone, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. Harvey Milk. So it makes me resentful of the teachers, even though I know they have nothing to do with this coursework. It's almost like the Bud Light thing, right? Yeah. Some ivory tower idiot saw fit to use a transgender influencer to promote the working class man's beer. Like, probably because that ivory tower idiot spent their formative years learning about Chaz Bono instead of Thomas Jefferson. Besides the point. Now, people in bottling plants are losing their job. Bud Light distribution delivery truck guys are being jeered at in grocery store parking lots. They're being ridiculed by their friends. Their compensation structure is directly correlated with how much beer they move, and they're not selling beer. Cowards in ivory towers who wouldn't dare come talk to me on my podcast anytime. I know we'll, we'll promote this, and I'll get like, ur, 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 you're just a big, dumb, idiot insurrectionist. And then I go, hey, really good point. I appreciate that, that, that you see the world through a different lens. Would you like to talk to me for an hour on my podcast? You know what they do? They go, no, that wouldn't be worth my time. And they never do it. They never want to do it. They never want to have a long format conversation where we talk about facts. Because they know. It's not even about getting dunked on at this point, right? When two people, two peers are going head to head and they're like debating and then like one gets a good jab in and then dunks on This is like good and evil. This is just right or wrong. I'd love to talk to the person who saw fit to put Chaz Bono on a list with Benjamin Franklin and have a long format conversation with that individual. They'll never do it. They'll never do it. Their brain is divorced from the real world. They live in a little eco chamber. And I look at it, Luann, like they're sticking their nose up at me. Like, Look at these parents. They're mm-hmm. either not going to pay attention or they're going to, you know, you know, they're going to bow the knee and they're going to they're going to. And, 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 and if gosh forbid I raise my voice, if I send a little letter to the principal, hey, hey, principal, <laughs> um, do you think we should be teaching five year olds about Chaz Bono? That principal's like, dude. I broke up five fights. Yeah, I got right. this parent with every kid's a- allergic to egg whites and nuts. <laughs> and and now I got you, the conservative talk radio guy in my ear, telling me to change our textbooks. Like, I'm overworked. I'm underpaid. I don't know whose throat to choke on this. And before anyone, like, uh, pulls that clip, <laughs> they already did. <laughs> he threatened to th- choke my throat. <laughs> It's just a saying. Um, but someone ought to be held accountable. Well, there was a curriculum committee that picked this for you. Okay, yeah. you got to educate me about this. So I'm just saying, you figure out who's on that committee. You know. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could see the contributors of the book. They're all from California. Well, right. You know. Yeah. Maybe I'll fly out to Palo Alto <laughs> and talk to Albert Camarillo. <laughs> you know, or. Uh, uh, or, or Canada. Look, one of our <laughs> program consultants is from Toronto, Canada. Because that makes sense. <laughs> and he's actually the head consultant. Jim Cummins, Ph.D. Hey, guys, we're putting together a textbook for American children <laughs> in South Carolina. Let's put together our team. All right, anyone call Jim Cummins up in Cal- uh, Canada? <laughs> Let's get eight people from California. That's what we need. All right, I'm out of time. On the first segment, guys, I talk about this stuff because I share my life with you. I want you to know I'm not like this stupid person who reads from a script. Like, 
none of my clients lost any money when they used a fixed indexed annuity. That gives them participation in the market's upside. None of the markets. I don't want to be that guy. And, and, and also, if you don't see the correlation between social movements in this country and how they're going to impact your retirement, I think you're playing checkers Whereas the people putting Chaz Bono in my five-year-old's textbook are playing chess. If you just want to look at the world through, like, the scope of, like, what's in front of me right this minute, and I know you're not one of those people. Talk radio people are not these types of people. Talk radio people understand cause and effect. They're not sheep. They like hearing lots of different perspectives. They like learning. They like... uh, digesting information and reaching their own conclusions on things. If you don't recognize that this type of stuff, my kids are going to be making your social security payments in T minus 15 years because that's how the social security trust fund has been designed. It's a Ponzi scheme. Current recipients of benefits are being paid by current payers of FICA taxes. Your retirement is directly correlated with this type of crap. And I refuse to be quiet. I refuse to sit back and take this on the chin and pretend it's normal to compile a list of notable people and put Chaz Bono and Benjamin Franklin next to each other. And you say, you're a radical. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're a radical. Chaz Bono's a celebrity's kid. Benjamin Franklin is a founding father. The man invented the bifocal and the fire department. All right. I wrote two books. And what do you know, Luann? Neither book references Chaz Bono in it. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I wrote one book. It's called The Power of a Plan, Your Politically Incorrect Guide to a Worry-Free Retirement. Now, I have to admit, in Chapter 7 of that book, I uh, fawn over Gavin Newsom's ability to leave the, lead the state of California. You know, because he's doing such a marvelous job there. <laughs> Anytime someone devises an application on their phone in your state where we count human feces on uh, street corners, you know, that's when I self-reflect. And I talk about, I put together my, uh, my, my human feces on the street czar, and I go, Tom, how do we get people to stop crapping on the streets? That's leadership for you. So anyways, I wrote two books. One's called The Power of a Plan, Your Politically Incorrect Guide to a Worry-Free Retirement. We give the thing away for free. All you need to do is call into my office, get the book for free, or go to our website. And the other book I wrote is called Retire Y'all, Your Guide to Retiring in the State of South Carolina. It's the first and only book ever penned about retiring in the great state of South Carolina. And oh, by the way, it was written by someone from the state of South Carolina, not someone from California. Also, the book doesn't reference Chaz Bono or Harvey Milk. Doesn't reference any politicians for that matter. That would be nice. Have we not compiled a list of notable scientists and engineers and inventors? And do we really need. Uh, at what point. There had to be a draft of some sort. I'm sorry I keep bringing this up. Let me get my number out, <laughs> and I'm going to keep going on this. 843-300-1182, 843-300-1182, or you can check us out online at retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. Call my office up, visit our website, you get the book for free. Free book, extra, extra, 843-300-1182, 843-300-1182, or website retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. I'm sorry, Ethan, I'm going long, um, but I, I want to just rift on this for one more second. So I'd imagine you got 12 contributors to a textbook. 
By the way, why did we need 12? I mean, come on, it's a 200-page book here. I could write that book in a, during the summer. Um, but anyways, we had 12. And biographies online, there's, I don't know, 30 names, roughly. I'm just eyeball wet my finger, stick it in the air. About 30 names. I'm wondering, hey, Harriet Tubman, okay, good name. Sitting Bull, okay, all right. Pocahontas, Louis Pasteur, Rosa Parks, okay, I'm, I'm into this. Eleanor Roosevelt, Jackie Robinson, I'm good. Booker T. Washington, George Washington. Lady in the back goes, I'd like to include Chaz Bono. <laughs> And then everyone in the room just goes like, oh, no. If we let uh, uh, Paul Apodaca, if we don't let Paul Apodaca include Chaz Bono, he's going to be triggered. <coughs> Let's forget about the fact that thousands and thousands of five-year-old kids – are going to read our book and treat it with reverence and assume that every name listed within the book is someone that we should try to emulate and study and walk the same path they walked. None of the 12 people had the spine to go. Good idea, but maybe five-year-old kids will learn about Chaz Bono in seventh grade when they decide to start researching... Uh, when our give him give him five or six years of indoctrination before we teach him about Chaz Bono, we're going right off the rip. Kindergarten, Chaz Bono. There you go. <laughs> <sighs> I deal with this crap, Luann. <laughs> Trying to raise kids in this environment. I know you got grandkids too. Yeah. And I can't shelter them, right? Right. They could be a voice. You could look at it that way. They could no, be the I voice of reason, right? That's I told my wife. Mm -hmm. I go, if I get Ben kicked out of school, <laughs> that'll be one of the most impactful moments of his life. Because mm -hmm. he'll go, why did my daddy get me kicked out of school? <laughs> and I'll go, son, here's why. Because your first day of school, you came home with a textbook that had Chaz Bono on a list with Benjamin Franklin. And at first, he won't get that. He'll hate me, and he'll mm -hmm. be resentful, and he'll be bitter because all of his friends are in school, yeah. and he's not. Yeah. But maybe one day, when he's 50 years old, he'll go, yeah, maybe Dad was onto something mm -hmm. there. Maybe we shouldn't idolize a celebrity's gender-confused child the same way we idolized one of our founding fathers, the same way we idolized Abraham Lincoln. <sighs> I mean, I'm okay with Barack Obama being on the list. Can we get rid of Chaz Bomo and, and throw <laughs> Barack Obama? You know, I don't see the world through the same lens as him, but like, I'd get it. You know, an eight term president, eight year president, two term president, like, although many would like to see him as an eight term president. All right, I gotta, I gotta take a break. 843 300 1182. Get our books for free. Books for free, extra, extra, read all about it. 843 300 1182. If you hate everything I said, call the office up and breathe heavy and threaten to kill me on the voicemail that's always fun for us to listen to on monday uh write me in hate mail i know one person up in myrtle beach has found great peace in writing me hate mail and um you know threatens to tell tell on me and send me to the principal's office and like let me talk to your manager uh type stuff like that's fun i actually have a drawer it's not in here it's in my office um we get 15 compliments for every one complaint or hate letter. And typically of our complaints, if you look at our complaints online, every one-star review of us is someone who doesn't work with us. It's someone who's just like, you said this and it offended me, right? Maybe I'll go online and give um, the My World Interactive Kindergarten Social Studies book a one-star review um, with the message of, don't think Chaz Bono should be on a list with Benjamin Franklin. Mm -hmm. Wonder if I'm even allowed to give my review. All right, break. 843-300-1182. 843-300-1182. Check us out online, retireyall.com. Get our books, Retire Y'all, Your Guide to Retiring in the State of South Carolina. First and only book ever penned about retiring in South Carolina. We give the thing away for free. 
go to our website, retireyall.com, retireyall.com. Adam Curran will be right back with more Retire Y'all Radio. Hello, I'm Lou Ann Fulmer here with Adam Curran. He's founder of Curran Financial Partners. We're so happy to have you along with us today. All right, so you know what? We are getting close to the end of the year already. And so why don't you talk to us about maybe some year-end IRA stuff we need to be thinking about. Excellent delivery there. On the, in the break, I was like, Luann, just go year-end IRA stuff. And you just delivered it. I love it. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm not picking on you. Um, but, yeah, it's year-end here. As far as I'm concerned, it's year-end. Like, we're already planning for RMDs, right? So um, they keep changing the RMD year on us. So it used to be 70 and a half. Then it was, like, 72. Then for some of you, it's going to be 73, 74. I think as high as 75. Probably change the rules on us again at the end of the year in order to raise our debt ceiling and print more money. That's what they're doing. They're like, let's print money, and then we'll raise the retirement age. Let's not fix Social Security. Let's keep teaching our kids about Chaz Bono, but, yeah, we'll change this little RMD age, and then we'll force people to take their IRA out over 10 years when they meet their maker. Um, because I spent 30 minutes of our show talking about kids' social studies books, I'm just going to have to, like, rapid-fire the content here. So um, one thing that you ought to be doing, if you are of RMD age, I've said this a million times on the air. I'll say it again because I see so many of you not doing this, Okay. So with Trump's tax reform, which we all know sunsets at the end of 2025, so we got two, three, what is that, two and a half more years of Trump's tax reform, most of us are now taking a standard deduction, right? We're no longer itemizing. And when I say that, people are like, oh, no, 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 I itemize. Because you've been so accustomed to itemizing for like the last 25 years before Trump's tax reform. So you just hear the word itemize and you think you itemize. 90% of society take a standard deduction now, right? Because if you're a married couple, I'm going to screw the number up. I think it's like $28,000. You're over 65. There's different like hooks and ladders, just like the progressive income tax system. If this, then this. If you reach this tier, then that. So it's about $28,000. And if you're um, you know, single, it's, I don't know, $14,000. I know there's an accountant right now squirming, but I got four kids on five and under, so I can't remember the darn break even points of every single one of these numbers it's around those points in essence trump doubled the standard deduction and he did that so mainstream americans wouldn't have to like uh deduct their home office and count their mileage on their car and be so scrupulous about keeping receipts and crap like that also streamlined the process of tax auditing for the irs right when 90 percent of people take a standard deduction you can kind of look at that return and be like, do we really need to audit this one? Like, we got their W-2. We got their standard deduction. Looks like they made an IRA contribution. This one's good. We don't need to dive into the fact that they wrote off too much of a percentage of their house for their home office and so on and whatever. But anyways, most of you are taking a standardized deduction. And you're giving money to churches and charities. You're taking the money out of your IRA. You're giving the money to churches and charities. When you take the money out of your IRA, you pay tax on the distribution. When you give the money to churches and charities, you're not realizing a deduction because you're taking a standard deduction rather than itemizing your deductions. So what you need to do is do what's called a qualified charitable deduction. Now, a qualified charitable deduction gives the money directly from your IRA right to your church, right to the charity. And by that money going right to the church or the charity rather than your bank account, you don't pay tax on that distribution. So item number one, take a qualified charitable distribution in lieu of processing your RMD and then giving money to charities. If you're under the age of, 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 of required minimum distributions, you should look at bundling your charitable giving via an instrument called a donor advised fund. Same philosophy here. Most of you giving money to churches are not realizing any economic benefit. Now, I get it before all the Christians jump on me. I don't give to church for economic benefit. I'm going to be with the good Lord one day. I get it. But if you're going to give money to church, you might as well get an economic benefit to boot. So one way of realizing an economic benefit, meaning a tax deduction for your charitable giving to church is by bundling your charitable giving. If you know with certainty, certainty you're going to give the church 5000 bucks a year. Well, 5000 bucks 
each and every year is not going to be enough to write off. So you bundle four years of giving, throw it in a donor advised fund. Now you have a $20,000 deduction on that tax return. The donor advised fund acts as a vessel that you can invest it in, in, in whatever types of instruments you want, stable value funds, growth stocks. And then every year the money siphons from the donor advised fund to the church or the charity. There's two things you should look into at the end of the year. My advisors have a hit list of stuff people should consider doing before year end with their IRA and with their money as to keep numbers off your 1040 tax return. Good tax planning is done right now. It's not done March 25th. It's not done April 13th. Good tax planning must be done in the calendar year you're trying to save money in taxes. Call my office up, get my book, 843-300-1182, 843-300-1182, or check us out online at retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. I wrote two books. One's called The Power of a Plan, Your Politically Incorrect Guide to a Worry-Free Retirement. We give the book away for free. One's called... Uh, Retire Y'all, Your Guide to Retiring in the Great State of South Carolina. It's the first and only book ever penned about retiring in the great state of South Carolina. Did you know that the South Carolina tax code has a bunch of information in it that, uh, information, a bunch of provisions within it that differ from every other state in the, on, on the face of, I was going to say the face of the earth, in our country. So as a South Carolinian retiree, you should have a retirement plan and a tax saving strategy that's specifically uniquely designed for you and you alone. Learned recently there's an account in South Carolina called a catastrophe savings account where you could put money into an account just like an HSA or just like an IRA or a 529. So long as the money is used at a place like Home Depot or Lowe's after we have a named storm, oh. you get a tax deduction for putting the money in the account and then when you pull the money out, you don't pay tax. I heard this year is going to be a particularly bad one for hurricanes because of how warm it's been. You know, because of global warming. <laughs> Climate change now. Oh, is that what it is no, now? No, they changed it. <laughs> Talk to someone from Kansas about climate change. We were talking before we got on the air. Luann's from Kansas, and her people, her kin, are the friendliest people on the face of the earth. <laughs> They get the coldest winters, the hottest summers, the worst tornadoes, the worst blizzards. They just take it on the chin, skip to work, root for their chiefs. Yeah. Eat, eat probably some of the best barbecue in mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, Texas barbecue. Woo-hoo. Got to eat Texas barbecue. Texas barbecue stinks. <laughs> Go to Kansas. You know? <laughs> Heat Texas. index yesterday, 126. How does that even exist? I don't know. We broke the record. You could fry an egg. <laughs> I know. Oh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. All right. I got to take a break. Come plan with us, guys. 843-300-1182. 843-300-1182. Actually, I got one more bit. Oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to 10 minutes. Okay. Get our book. Um, Come visit us. Even if you don't work with us, even if you're like, yeah, you know, I just kind of like that you were yelling at in, in public schools and like I just wanted to see what you guys are all about like if you spend a little bit of time with us in our first like visit in our planning process is a 15 minute phone call 15 minutes out of your very busy life it's on the phone we don't make you come to our office and deal with traffic and all that all you got to do is spend 15 minutes being intentional being thoughtful leaning into someone who, who actually loves sinking their teeth into tax returns who loves wrapping their mind around the progressive income tax system and the maneuvers you could make before the end of the year to keep numbers off your 1040. Spend some time with us. Let us geek out. Another transaction we should all consider making in our IRAs before the end of the year, we all know about above-the-line deductions, right? Above-the-line deductions include IRA contributions. So if you're a self-employed person, you want to find the right IRA chassis. Maybe it's a simple IRA. Maybe it's a SEP IRA. 
each one of those are going to fit for a different type of business. SEP IRAs really don't work if you got employees. SEP IRAs work better if your if your stated income, your taxable income is is higher. Simple IRAs might be perfect for you if you got a few employees. Might be perfect for you if you have no employees, but your tax return is pretty lean and mean because you write everything off. Find the right above the line deduction chassis to put your money into. Maybe, um, you know, you go to work and your spouse stays at home. Make sure you make a contribution, a spousal IRA contribution. Maybe your husband is a, uh, what was the word I came up with a few weeks back? A suburban latte sipping house husband. (laughs) And I say that because I'm a misogynist. And I also say that because I'm envious, because I wish I was a suburban house husband. Um, boy, I've got a couple clips in this show that if you were to really isolate, like, he said he's going to throat choke my throat, and he <laughs> says he's a misogynist. See right there. Is this the type of person you want your kids to spend time with? <laughs> um, my God. Okay, I guess I should take a break now, and I shouldn't have gone two minutes longer because I just got myself in trouble. Uh, come plan with us, guys. Get my books in the mail. He, I'm going to do a little Billy Mays. All right? Just get the book. What if Billy Mays did it like that? <laughs> You're going to buy this ShamWow because it's going to dry your car off. Yes, you want my Ginsu knives. They're sharp and they cut vegetables. Like, look at me cut through this soda can. Effortlessly. My book is the only book ever written about retiring in South Carolina. Whether you work with us, whether you do it on your own, whether you work with the guy in the shopping mall or your golfing buddy or your financial advisor is your friend from up north for 20 years, you might as well get my book for free. And here's the other beautiful thing. We don't bother you. Like, if you call up and get our book and you go, like, stop calling me. I don't like you. Like, your book stinks. Uh, We just won't bother you anymore. Like, my people are not going to want to call you. Like, we're not like a call center from India. Like, we're human beings who live in your neighborhood. So, naturally, if you're like, hey, I just want the book. Don't call me ever again. Like, okay, here you go. Here's the book. I mean, we can't, like, renege on what we offered. I'm I'm pleading with you to please take me up on my free book offer. Somewhere there's like a book on how to be a good telemarketer, and I just broke all the <laughs> rules. Right? I'm just like begging now at this point. Please, please get my book for free. It's the only book ever penned about retiring in the state of South Carolina. And there's more. Please, please, please. Uh, okay, I got to take a break. 843-300-1182, 843-300-1182. Get the books for free. The Power of a Plan, Your Politically Incorrect Guide to a Worry-Free Retirement, or Retire Y'all, Your Guide to Retiring in the State of South Carolina. Call us up. Go to the website. Get the book right there, retireyall.com. This is Retire Y'all Radio. We'll be right back. Hi, you're listening to Adam Curran. I'm Luann Fulmer. And Adam, we don't have a lot of time, but any parting words? Yeah, so it's already year-end mode in my office, like, Christine's already starting to calculate required minimum distributions. When we get together with clients, we're already talking about, you know, why don't we consider harvesting tax losses? You know, some of you guys um, decided to buy tech stocks uh, at the end of 2021, and we all know what happened in 2022. And I know all of our talking heads on TV and men wearing makeup are telling us we're in the strongest bull market of all time, but we still... The market is still not as high as it was at the end of 2021. So some of you still have losses within your account. So it's a good time to sell things that realize a loss and pair them up with things that have gains. Now, there's what's called wash rules, so you can't turn around and rebuy the stuff. But um, it's called tax loss harvesting, and that's something that we're doing for our clients right about now. Um, we're educating our clients about the best above the line deductions. It's troubling to me, Luann, how little people know about the progressive income tax system. Mm -hmm. And I cannot help but think it's by design. And then I spent half of my show today talking about my kid's social studies book. 
and they're teaching him about Chaz Bono. So go figure. The average American doesn't know the difference between an above-the-line deduction and a below-the-line deduction. The average American doesn't know the difference between a standardized deduction or an itemized deduction. The average American doesn't realize that if their income breaches another tax bracket, not all of their money gets taxed at that tax level, just the amount of income that breached into that bracket. The average person doesn't recognize that if your MAGI is over $44,000, 85% of your Social Security gets taxed. The average person doesn't recognize that the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, is a subsidized program that's based off of your income, so if you can keep your income low, you very well might get free health insurance, even if you got a million bucks. If your income goes over a certain threshold, your Medicare Part B premium jumps through the roof. I think it was Jan John Maynard Keynes who said, the only intellectual pursuit worth anything is the avoidance of taxes. <laughs> I took that to heart. Uh, as soon as our government starts utilizing our money in a way that's conducive to economic prosperity and the betterment of my life and my kids' lives, I'll run around saying everyone needs to pay their fair share. <laughs> but so long as I see my hard-earned money getting sent in a barge to Ukraine and my hard-earned money going towards illegals, medical care, uh, I'm going to work my tail off to make sure anyone who comes in contact with my little American dream, my little company, takes advantage of the law the way it's written, understands every single credit and deduction above the line, below the line, itemized, standardized, understands the tax code so they don't pay a red cent more in taxes than they're legally obliged to. Come plan with my company. Get our books in the mail. I wrote a, two books. We give them away for free. Powerful Plan, Your Politically Incorrect Guide to a Worry-Free Retirement. Retire, y'all, your guide to retiring in the state of South Carolina. We give these books away for free. All you need to do is call my office up. We'll send you in the mail or visit our website, 843-300-1182, 843-300-1182, or check us out online at retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. And here's what that process looks like. You call my office up. Put your address. I don't even know what the process looks like. I know it's very friction-free. Like, we just send you the book. And then someone does call you, right? Because I am a capitalist pig. I'm trying to grow my little company. They go, hey, did you like the book? Did you learn anything? Do you want to go through our planning process? Because the book shines a light on our planning process. Some of you are going to go, no thanks. Some of you are going to go, yes. Come plan with us. 843-300-1182. God bless America. God bless South Carolina. Thank you so much for listening to my little show.